Hey there, everyone. This is Kevin Daisy, and this is another episode of the Managing Partners Podcast. And today I got a special guest. I have Michael Massey on the show today, and Michael is an SEO strategist with my company. And we were just getting an update from Michael at an internal meeting. Uh, we do daily huddles uh, with the whole team, and, and Michael came in to present his findings on the 2024 March Google core update. And it was very impressive. He did a great job. And so I want to have him on the show to share that with you all. So uh, if you know, of course, we, you know, outside of the podcast, we have a marketing agency, we do SEO content for law firms all around the country. And so we're really deep into this. We spend all our time learning and getting better and understanding what Google's doing so that we can help our clients in the search uh, spectrum. So that's all types of search. And so, uh, Michael, welcome to the show. Yeah. Thanks for having me. I really, really appreciate it. Um, uh, you like, we were talking before, it's like never been on a podcast before. So it's kind of a, kind of an exciting, uh, chair. All right. <laughs> all right. So Michael's first time on a podcast. Um, but yeah, we're just going to hear a big, just, you know, very conversational episode here. Just, uh, having him cover what he's learned and what my team is working on. And again, just getting this information to you out there. Uh, if you have obviously a law firm and you have a website and you care at all about organic traffic and building and growing your firm, then you should be really aware of Google updates and changes. Big stuff happening. A lot of changes last year. Uh, August, people got slaughtered uh, with mm -hmm. the core update. Uh, November had another big update. And so Google's got one that's right now started at the beginning of March rolling out. And so one of the things that we do here is we have to watch and check in and, and see what's happening and make adjustments and, and try to understand what we need to do to do better. Um, and what's, what's that going to look like in a month or two from now? So we got to stay on top of this stuff. So, so Michael, I guess just kind of jumping right into it. Yeah. Um, um, give us a little <clears throat> bit of, you know, the update you're seeing and kind of what you presented to us uh, the other day. Yeah. So uh, I, I got it. I'd be remiss not if I didn't say kind of at the top here, um, I, I've spent some time in SEO outside of array digital with other, other roles. And, and um, one of the things that has always been kind of interesting to me about SEO is that it's um, it's always kind of painted as this very ethereal, unattainable kind of clandestine thing um, and a lot of that's centric around Google and how they kind of protect their algorithms and they don't share really what their algorithms are doing, but kind of give you these little nuggets and you have to infer a bunch of stuff. Um, so it's kind of interesting because that's kind of how I was trained in SEO initially. It was like, oh, yeah, we really don't know. And, and everybody was just kind of comfortable with this idea that we just don't know. And um, <clears throat> the reality is, is that that's partially true but it's nothing that you should be hiding behind uh, because when I came to Array Digital, they are like, yeah, there are some things we don't know, but we can read the things that they talk about and we can figure out like what the next step should be and, and like how it affects our clients. And, and so coming into Array Digital, it was like, yeah, it's a lot of people out there say they're doing SEO and they're not really sure how to do SEO. And I was talking with someone yesterday about this where it, it seems like this like you pay thousands and thousands of dollars sometimes for a, a marketing agency to do seo for you the marketing agency is not totally sure what to do with the seo and you don't know about enough about seo to argue with the marketing agency so you just keep paying the bill and hoping that the needle moves in the right direction and yeah and that's just <laughs> uh, that's asinine behavior like why would <laughs> why would you do that so uh, one of the, the things, and I guess this is more uh, kind of sending some honor your way, Kevin, is that uh, one of the ways that Array Digital really does it right is they purpose to kind of try to figure out, no, how is this going to affect our clients? Because we've, we've started to have the, form these relationships with our clients and we want them to succeed and we care deeply about their performance when, the, when, when there's dips in performance. We're not over here like, oh, well, you know, I'm still getting paid it's more, it's a little more painful. And, and I can, I wish I could share internal conversations that happen <laughs> about that where, you know, no, we, company's we not freak, doing yeah. well. you know, you, oh, you've there's, seen it. There, there's internal fires. Like the client doesn't even know or say anything. And we're, 
oh my gosh, this just happened and we got to adjust. And, and Michael and his team and everyone else are going to work every day just to, to go, what was that? What happened? What do we got to do? Um, so it's, you know, a, a constant and that's, you know, that's, just, that's how we have to be. Yes. And uh, to be successful in this business and it, and while, you know, I'm not trying to promote ourselves on this podcast the whole time, but um, <laughs> anyone out there that's that does my SEO. Fault. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, I mean, I know a lot of folks that do SEO. We, I've been in this game a long time, and, and SEO is just one part of what we do, but it's a most challenging part, the most unknown part. <clears throat> but imagine if I hired a lawyer, and they're like, yeah, I don't really understand the law. So, But <laughs> yeah, uh, hire me, and I'll see what I can do. Uh, maybe you'll we'll get out of it. Maybe you won't. <laughs> so. Yeah, yeah, and I think it's a really good, right? Yeah, I think it's a really good segue just because um, I think the ultimate goal uh, that Google has is that they they don't really they don't really care about your website. They want you to present the user with the best possible answer to their query. Mm. And <clears throat> if you're not if you're not eating, sleeping, breathing that that mantra. Um, and you're instead trying to play games and trying to figure out how to trick Google. We're talking about a multi-billion dollar organization whose only goal is to make sure that users are getting clear and concise results for their search for their searches. Um, you know, the, the, their entire existence is dedicated to that. You are not going to figure out figure out how to trick Google. So you ha- that being said, you have to play by the rules. And that means taking a close look at every core update that comes out. Um, you know, we were talking uh, in, in the meeting where I did my presentation, we were talking about um, how Google, uh, a lot of people think it's just one algorithm that they're just making little tweaks to. But there's actually several algorithms. Like there's several updates that have happened over the years. And um, there may be even algorithms that, that they don't even share about that don't affect public search and don't affect you know the public in any way so there's no need to share about it uh as much things as as google keeps under under the vest or close to the vest uh you know we have to assume that there's more going on behind the scenes in order to make sure that again their ultimate goal is met you know filling those search search queries uh with the best possible information so i think that it's really a unique situation to be in to to be a part of a company that is purposing to really understand SEO rather than just taking everybody's money and seeing if it gets better when they make little tweaks and not really caring <laughs> necessarily if they win or, or, or lose. And, and I think that's the benefit of being in, in, in a company like this where, you know, we're so close, like, you know, it's a little smaller, it's like a team of rock stars, <laughs> um, you know, and so it's really cool um, to, to be a part of that. So I think yeah, that, I'll, let me ask yeah. you that real quick and then we'll jump into the core update so everyone can get yeah, that yeah. information. Um, yeah, I mean, just like a team of lawyers, I know a lot of law firms and uh, they have these you know, rock star teams and they hire the best and they, they're, they're growing and scaling. That's, that's us, but we're happy to be a marketing company. So uh, we, we believe in our business and what we do just like you do. Um, but on the, one of the things that you said, I want to get back to you to kind of, segue into the the updates is Google doesn't stay in business if they just rank your crappy content because you tricked Google and you put a bunch of keywords and you had AI write a piece every day and all this crap. People stop using Google because they're getting a bunch of crap answers and crap content they don't want to read. Mm-hmm. Then Google goes out of business. Mm-hmm. Google, they only care about the user, just like uh, Michael was saying. And so why would your law firm be number one in your area for personal injury attorney if you have these crappy, long keyword stuff, not readable pages of crap because it got you ranked before, right? And now Google's going, whoa, 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 whoa. This is not helpful. This is not good for my user who's asking for an answer a question or uh, they want to find the best personal injury attorney, and we want to connect them with the best based on the information they're putting out there and how helpful they are before they engage with that uh, firm. So yeah. that's what it's all going to be about, and and this means harder work. It means 
following the rules. It means being authentic. It means telling mm-hmm. stories. It means giving people multiple ways to digest this information. Yeah. Video, FAQs, infographics, you know, rational, readable, usable stuff. So anyway, that's just kind of a, you know, keep that in mind when you're listening today and, and going forward and looking at your content for your law firm and your website. Are you doing all those things um, the right way? Because if not, right. you're going to get hit real hard if you haven't already. So, mm-hmm. Absolutely. Um, Let's dive into really, it. Yeah, really well said. Uh, there was a time when <clears throat> all you had to do was put a website up and Google would rank you because if you had a website that had the best cookie recipe, your grandma's cookie recipe from you know 100 years ago or whatever, and people in the world need a cookie recipe, they'd find you because you have a website. Um, nowadays, it's it's much more sophisticated and much more complicated. And I think that's kind of a good jumping off point. Uh, one of the distillations of the helpful content update that I came up with from my presentation is you can read through all the stuff from from um, from Google, all the stuff where there's SEO talking heads that are really like trying, I guess people like me, <laughs> that are really trying to break down exactly what Google means by this update. But the, the one sentence I got out of it is when we don't answer the question, both Google and the user have no need for our content. You can write the most eloquent, most beautiful thing that you've ever written. It could be akin to Charles Dickens, it could be the best thing that's ever been written. If it doesn't answer the user's query, Google's not going to rank it and the user's not going to have a chance to click on it. You're not going to see performance from that. And so like that's kind of a big jumping off point, right? Like the helpful content update, it it kind of came across as this like really scary, like really bad thing because Google had been doing it a certain way for a while. And now I've got client websites that are not ranking like they used to with the same content and so it's like oh no google's evil and bad but that's not necessarily the case they were that it was really a good thing um and the best example i can give is the example i gave in my presentation when like if you had a house plant and you wanted to figure out how to take care of it if you googled how to take care of a succulent for example do you want do your do you want your answers to say you know what how to pot it excuse me, uh, how to water it, uh, how much sunlight does it need? Or would you rather read a 1400 word dissertation about the first succulent that was ever discovered in Mesopotamia or, or whatever? And then maybe like three quarters of the way down the page, you're like, oh yeah, succulents don't need a lot of water. And you get this like haphazard, weird, like halfway answer. Um, and it, it's clear, like what we've all been looking for a recipe on how to cook and bake chicken. And then we've said, why am I reading a story about the Civil War? I need to know <laughs> what temperature the chicken needs to be at, right? And so it's these are very rudimentary examples, but it gets yeah. more complicated whenever you start uh, talking about uh, the law firms, right? Talking about the, the subject of law, is it gets way more complicated because sometimes there's not direct answers to questions and queries. And so you have to figure out what the balance is Um, And it really boils down to uh, user satisfaction, right? Like they have to be satisfied by what they read on the page or they're going to do what's called pogo sticking where they land on a page and then they don't like what they saw and and then they bounce back to the SERP and they do that over and over and over again. You don't want to be one of those pages they pogo stick from. You want to be one of those pages where they stick and they stay and they, they read what you have to say because you're an authority and you're, you're answering their question directly. These are, these are the kinds of things that Google is trying. Like if you look at it from a 10,000 foot view, these are the kind of things that Google is trying to kind of turn, turn the direction for so that people will stop making content just to make content. It (laughs) used to be that having 2000 words on a page was fantastic because you could cram in all these keywords. There's tons of search intent that ends up on that page you get tons of traffic and then you get people hanging out and reading your content. Nowadays, people want the answer. <clears throat> and if you're not well, Google answering provide, it, like Google doesn't, Google doesn't care about your website. No. And they would probably prefer if you didn't even like, they don't have to have to send you to the website. They want the answer up front. Right. And so they yeah. want, you know, if you Google for a lot of things, you'll see like the answers at the top, it doesn't even link to a website or yep. you'll see, they'll pull the answer out of your website and throw it on the top 
for a featured snippet. Yep. And you don't even have to go anywhere else. You're done. You could have the answer right there and be on your merry way. So um, Google wants you to use Google. Mm -hmm. They don't really care about your website. And so the only thing we can do, though, is make them like your website as much as possible to where they're like, yes. you know what, man, they this site's got got it. You know what my my customer needs, my user. Yeah. And so. Yeah, to your point, the the all the long content, Google's like, okay, there's extensive information on this topic, so let's put them at the top. Mm -hmm. But now it's going, well, that's not good information, and it's not helpful, and there's no answers. So actually, let's let's not rank them at all. So yeah, and that's your point. Is a good what, thing. It's it a good is thing a, for it's a good yeah. thing for new folks getting in the game. If you've been in the game, you have a, a website that's ten years old. With a thousand pages of keyword stuff content, <laughs> yeah, you're not very happy right now, um, and you need to figure out how to pivot very quickly. Um, yeah, but if you're just getting started, we got some clients we just launched websites for that are like, bam, overnight mm -hmm. getting cases in a very in PI like very hard to rank areas with a fresh site over an yep. old site that's been around forever. Uh, that's trying to like scramble to clean up the mess and they're just, they're losing the game instead. So just think about some of these things as we're talking, you know, where, where do you stand? So. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, that's the thing you kind of mentioned uh, featured snippets and the beauty of a featured snippet, especially for a law firm is that, you know, going back to what I said before, like there's not always a direct answer. You know, sometimes it's a little bit more complicated than yes, we can get you off if you did this, this, and this as, as a criminal defense lawyer, right? As an example, um, it's not so simple sometimes, right? Like e each person, each case is a little bit different. You can get really deep in the minutia of things. And I think that Google is going to get, they may not be there yet, but the, I think that the direction that they're heading is more complicated subjects where they're going to be able to, to kind of suss out that, that this website is trying its very best to answer this question. And, yeah. and you're going to get brownie points for that, you know, rather than um, trying to teach someone how to pass the bar exam so that they can then understand their case and 2,800 <laughs> words on a page with 28 different, you know, uh, subjects and, you know, broken down into little, that's just too much. It's overwhelming. If it's overwhelming for a real person, it's overwhelming for Google to crawl and try to figure out what the heck you're trying to say. Um, yeah, and no, it, uh, yeah, it's um, and yeah, with the, you know, with the different practice areas and stuff like that in your state and the ABA, like there's certain things you can't say, you can't yep. answer all this stuff, but so it's it's even more difficult in the legal space, um, which is, you know, why it's even more important to have someone that's understands that vertical, and that you know that's all we do, but um, it's it's more challenging for sure, but yeah, you know, if you look at like I, I see sites all the time. Uh, for for law firms that they literally put like what the definition definition of criminal law is, or they put the definition of these things, and they cite all these codes and mm -hmm. just straight from the the law, like codes and stuff. It's just not what people want, and it's it's right. not something that a person or a, a normal consumer would understand. And it's you think it's helpful because you're getting keywords in there. <laughs> and then yeah. you're getting traffic. Like I looked at a site the other day and I can see, hey, they got some traffic. And they're like, yeah, we got some traffic. Great. Okay, well, where's it coming from? And then you look into it and it's like all this random stuff that's yeah. national. Like uh, they have a, a blog about like some national thing that has nothing to do with them at all. and won't help them in their state or location whatsoever. And they're getting all this traffic from a com uh, some random keyword. And it's completely useless traffic. So just because you right. have traffic doesn't mean it's good. So True. you really need to think about what you're putting on your website. It's, it's even more important than it ever has been. So, yeah. Yeah. we. I mean, we have a client right now where <clears throat> they don't do business in Washington State. They're across the country. And we'll, we're like, where the heck is this Washington traffic coming from? And it's not like they're just like, well, we don't really want to do business in Washington. It's like, no, we literally don't do business there. We can't do business there. Yeah, yeah we can't do business there. So <laughs> it, it it becomes this really <laughs> spaghetti 
this plate of spaghetti that you're constantly pulling on one noodle to try to figure out what's affecting this and what's affecting that. Um, but yeah, I think that, I think that, you know, speaking to the other part that you were saying earlier about um, kind of the answer being there and you're not even having to leave the SERP, that's the direction Google is going. And, yeah. and that's actually, that's their new AI, which is Gemini. Um, Gemini is at 1.5 right now release. It's still in development. It got into a little bit of hot water over some some pictures that it generated, but they took that feature down and they're working on that. Uh, but you know, as much as you as much as you can find someone to talk about how AI is not the future, you can find someone that can talk about how AI is definitely the future. And whatever camp you dis you subscribe to doesn't really matter because it's it's growing right now, whether you want want to believe in it or not. Um, I was telling our our whole company on Wednesday that I don't think we're looking at five years. I think we're looking at like today and like in the next six months to a year. I think we're going to see a major explosion of how AI uh, is involved, especially in SEO, because Google wants you to stay on Google. Um, that that that's where their interests lie. Is you, there's more chances for you to click on their ads. There's more chances yeah. for you to click on LSAs. If you're hanging out on a SERP and you're getting everything you need and you don't have to click over into anybody's website, they're trying to make that attractive. And Gemini is, is a part of that. And, you know, you can look at that one of two ways. You can look at it like, um, oh, no, that's the worst thing for my website ever. Or you can look at it like Google's just trying to survive themselves, right? Like you can't blame them for doing the thing that's going to make them to provide longe longevity for them. So, oh, yeah. <clears throat> so where do you, where do you uh, sweeten the pot, so to speak for your website? That's where you get into the minutia of, of is the user experience dialed in is, is the website easy to navigate are the pages that they need to access? Are they only one to two pages deep on the website? If you have something that's really important, that's six clicks deep, you're not going to get any users. Some somebody will drill down to it. You'll see something in analytics, and and if you want to believe that six or seven visits a month is enough to to make a page valuable, fine, you can believe that. But the reality is, is that you need to be around one to two, three at the very very max, and even that's too much. Uh, you know, you really want to be at that page depth of like one and two, and so that's another thing we focus on with structure, so that if they don't get their answer on the SERP and they do land on the page, they're not landing on a confusing, frustrating mess of a page. They're landing on this really clean, easy to use, easy to convert website so that when the user gets the answer that they, they need, they can leave or they can continue engaging with content. Like it makes it so much easier. And that is what Google is gonna be, is gonna be ranking. Because the reality of the new, you know, kind of to speak to the new March, 2024 update, the, the distillation of that is that they're just tired of websites that are created for uh, search engines. Yep. They're, like, we, they're like, you need to create a website for a person. And I think that what, this is where I get really excited. So you have to like, you have to throw <laughs> something at me. if I'm Let's go. To... I like it. <laughs> uh, what's want. exciting to me about it is that, the, you know, we talk about Google updates in a, in a, in a bucket and we talk about AI in a bucket. But we need to start marrying those two things together and realizing that they're they're affecting each other. And that's what's really cool about Gemini AI. From Gemini AI's own admission, it says in if you ask it what it is, what it does, I have it here and I don't need to share, but I'll just let, let me just grab it really quick. Well, I you put asked, that on the screen for us too. <clears throat> yeah, I asked the uh, Gemini what they are, what their purpose is and how they work. I just asked those three questions and I, you know, you can, you can do that yourself and you can figure it out. You just go to with a personal email, you can go to Google and you can find Gemini AI. If you download the app, it's, it's easy to access, but how the AI answers is very important to me because the last thing that I asked how it works, it said, I've learned from a massive amount of text data to communicate and generate text like a human. Mm -hmm. That's the biggest thing for me is it's trying to sound like us. It's trying to, 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 to relate to humans. It's being designed in a way that it can be conversational with humans. And so if you marry that to the SEO, you start to realize that 
Gemini's purpose, or I'm not going to say that it's the sole purpose, but one of its purposes is that it's got to start weeding out some of these spammy websites. And it's not looking at your website anymore as a robot crawler. It's looking at it like a human now, yep. uh, an AI developed human, right? So that it can give answers to people based on what they're looking for, based on what a human needs. That's why this AI development is so important to keep your eyes on. Because long gone are the days of black hat SEO, where you just put a bunch of keywords on a white space with white text and think that Google's going to read it and rank it. It's not happening anymore. You can't do that anymore. So well, yeah, it's I mean, really good, cool. Here's a good way to think about it: is uh, imagine you listening right now, the person listening on the podcast right now. Imagine you pull up um, three digital marketing agencies. We'll use our. You pull up three of their websites, and then you choose the one that you had the most that you felt the most useful. They gave you the best information, and for you to make a decision, right, to hire someone like us. Well, basically, AI is going to do that same type of thing, hundred percent as a human, and so it is is going to be able to sort through and go. You know what? This law firm's website gave me the best answers, the best information, all the questions that I was looking for. Videos there, FAQs, bullet points. The content's broken up in a way that's digestible, and and it gives the answer sort the top, right? It gives me everything up there that I need to to know before I get into it. Um, so just think about yourself doing the same exercise to choose a restaurant or to choose a hotel to stay at, whatever it may be. If you did that exercise yourself, you're going to choose the best one, and so AI is basically going to be a doing that same thing so if you're if your website is not helpful um and it's just got a bunch of crap on there <laughs> yeah you're gonna lose yeah and that's the the core update for that's coming down this month is like they're trying to get rid of spam they just are they're dialing in helpful content a little bit more a lot of people are upset about the helpful content update because it started you know deranking pages and they think that there's some level of unfairness to that um listen Split hairs all day long if you want to about if it's, you know, unfair or not. The reality is, is that you if you want to be a player in the SEO game, you got to play Google's game. You, you just have to. Um, yeah, 100%. Nothing, nothing against Bing, but we're not getting most of our traffic from Bing. People don't use Bing. Nothing against any other of the thousands and thousands of directories and search engines out there. But we're just not getting traffic from there. The, the lion's share of your traffic is coming from Google. So if you can just if you know that already, which most SEOs do, then you you yeah. know you got to sit down and digest this stuff and understand it, or you are going to suffer and you are going to be telling your clients, "Hey, sorry, we're still doing bad because we didn't do the work to figure out how to make it better." And you have to make it better. That's just that's all there is to it. If they change this giant thing, like help HCU was a big thing, they change it. You, you've got to you've got to be able to roll with those punches and be really clued in to what they're doing, or you're you're just going to suffer. And and it nobody likes suffering, right? Nobody likes seeing the the line graph go down. Nobody likes well, you know, I mean, it's, it's forced. It's not just it's directly tied to your business uh, growth and or uh, ability to stay in business. Really, I mean, your revenue. Yeah. So I have a, a this is a real story. This is um, a lawyer that I know. They had um, maybe 3,000 a month in organic traffic. So 3,000 organic per month that found them through searches, not uh, with their name in it, right? So not branded search. Mm -hmm. And they relied on that for a long time and they rode that wave and they sat back and kind of let it let it go. And they went down to 1,000 or less organic. That equaled, that was over a million in revenue lost in one year. Mm -hmm. So from 3 million in revenue to 2 million in revenue, which is, that means laying off people, yeah, scaling down your company, <clears throat> trying to fix all that mess and understand it. And, um, mm -hmm. but I, I guess, th so that, uh, so it's real. Like you, if you're relying on SEO and you drop, you're going to feel it on your, in your pocketbook. Right. So that's yeah. a problem. The other thing too, is I think right now it's, it should be exciting for anyone, especially with a smaller firm or you're trying to get started. And, uh, there's, there's a lot of opportunity right now. And yeah. one of the other things too, I see a lot, which I don't want people to get discouraged is 
Well, SEO is complicated. I don't understand it. It costs a lot of money and I haven't been doing it. So instead, I'm just going to pay Google, Google ads, LSA, because I, I don't even want to get into it. They don't understand it. And so I would say that there's a huge opportunity right now for you to get in the game and to do well. Mm -hmm. And if you're doing things right, you can do very well, very quickly compared. Um, but at the same time, Google wants you to pay them. There's other opportunities, right? So we talk about Google because they own like this, the biggest market share. If that mm -hmm. becomes Bing in a year, sure, we'll be in Bing. Let's go. Yeah, but, um, shift. yeah and things you can't be emotional about this stuff. It is what it is. Most of the searchers that don't know you are going to use Google and they're going to find an answer. An answer. They're going to find a firm if, if it's yours or not. So you want to be playing in other things too. LSAs, if they work for you, let's do it. If uh, your Google business profiles, all of that should be optimized and you should be playing that game. Google ads, that can work. Depends on your practice area. You got to look at the whole landscape. Yeah. And, you know, how can you win at all those things? And what's the strategy behind it? So, uh, but don't be afraid of SEO because right now the newcomers, you have an opportunity to take a lot of market share from these big firms that have been in the game for a long time. So, yeah, I, I would say two things to that. Like you're, you're spot on. Um, but just so that, you know, the, the people listening know how, how we operate, uh, the SEO team and the PPC team don't meet separately. We're, we're part of the same team. And so, you know, the the inference from that is is pretty obvious, like, OK, they kind of view those two things as together. But what it's saying on a deeper level and is what we believe is is that it's more of a portfolio. You, when you mm -hmm. invest money, you don't put it all in one stock. You put it you kind of spread it around. Some's aggressive, some's not so aggressive. Some's meant for longevity. Some's meant to just play some to see if you, you can win big early. Um, That's a good point. I like that analogy. <laughs> yeah. We tell people that we tell our clients that give us a year, like really give us a year to do the SEO. But if you need something today, if you need something tomorrow, then you need to start looking at Google ads. You need to start looking at LSAs. It's the quickest way to be at the very top of the page, but that's not where you should live. We, you know, you want to establish that budget monthly for both things. And oftentimes, you know, that's kind of where we lose some some clients. You know, it, it's hard to convince people to spend more money whenever they've already been paying for for SEO. And that's honestly, that's a that's a problem that I let Kevin worry about. <laughs> that's a but, challenging one. I mean, it's um, yeah, you know, people are impatient and they want the the results right away. And lawyers are definitely like that. But um, anyone listening, if you're like, yeah, oh, I need to market, but I haven't done anything, um. Just like Michael's saying, I mean, you don't want to, you don't want to put all your money into like, uh, you know, a meme crypto coin <laughs> without having, but you have an IRA or a four hundred one k with your company, and you're not even using, you're not putting money there first, right? So you need right. to, and that's kind of with SEO. We you want to invest in SEO or at least get started, mm -hmm. and and start moving that direction. But if you need phone calls today because it's just where you are, yeah. Then it's all about strategy and planning. Like, okay, we're gonna we're gonna get you a nice website. We're gonna do some initial content, but we're gonna put your budget mostly into ads. But once we get that phone ringing, what's your average client worth? Okay, it's worth five grand. Okay, uh, you're paying us three. You get average client of five. We got you five new clients this month. Like, we yeah. should probably be be investing more. And so, all yeah, right, if we don't help our clients grow, then we're not we're not here anyway. So it's. It's um, an opportunity presentation, right? Like uh, I, the the reality is, is that everybody money's always changing hands. That's always going to happen, and you always want to keep more of it in your pocket than than what you're putting out. I totally get that. Everybody deals with that at some level, whether it be a large amount of money to down to a small amount of money. You know, everybody has to manage a budget, and we get that. But the reality is, is that when when it's time to spend the money, when it's time to invest. We give those opportunities and we give them with with a heart and a motivation of really wanting to see our clients succeed. Um, that's like the biggest thing for us, because if we're telling you six months to a year before you get um, really any kind of crazy SEO growth, that's just that's our spin up time for our content team to get writers organized and to write like 
really good content that not only is good, but it's also compliant and is not saying things that's going to get your, your company in, tr in trouble. Yeah. And then that gets us something on page that we can start tweaking. We can start adding schema to, and I can get into the weeds very fast, but <laughs> Well, I mean, there is a lot of things to, to accomplish and, and um, yeah. especially for a firm that's not done helpful content or put out good things. Um, and yeah. then there's video, like how do we get our clients to be on the same page? Hey, we're writing this content. We need videos. Let's schedule that out. Let's, you know, work with us and mm -hmm. our partners to, to do the video, uh, to post the videos, to optimize the videos. There's just a lot of things that have to happen and yeah. it takes time, but the payoff is is so much greater um it's and so when you don't greater. have to pay for ads all day every day <laughs> you can reduce that ad budget or stop them all together if you wanted to we've had multiple clients stop ads all together uh, mm. the organic drives consistently better higher quality because you know the top the top clients you know are, are doing the research they want to read they want to get a website. They want to look at your reviews. They want to watch a video. Um, the ad clicker that you send them to a, a landing page that kind of just funnels them into a, a conversion. They're not going to be your, your high end cases, right? So no. it's good to do that, but you're, you're just not getting the, the clients that you probably really want. And the other thing is yeah. too, like the click through rate on ads is like a couple percentage, like 2.8 or whatever, right? Yep. So where's all the rest of the clicks going? So you, you, all the rest of the clicks are below that. And so yep. if you only live in the ads, you're you're playing in a very small part of the opportunity in your market. And I see a lot of people just, they just get stuck right there. Been doing the ads for five years. They've never done anything else. And so they have five years go by with no, nothing to show for it. If you stop paying for ads tomorrow, you're out of business. Yep. And, and yep. now you have nothing to, to fall back on. So. Yeah. And, and to your point, the two and a half, percent click through rate to like let's say five percent five percent would be incredible two and a half percent we're like okay we're that's where we want to be because we're not looking at ads as a solution for everything we're looking at ads as a solution for a short-term period to get the phone ringing yep. um like like kevin said it, you got to build something it, you can't just do ads and and it's a i guess we're kind of talking about a sphere from all different sides right like, cause you can, you can build ads, but if they land on a page, that's terrible, they're going to bounce. If they land on a website, that's hard to navigate, that doesn't have the full answer that they need. Cause you haven't done content. You haven't thought about SEO. You haven't thought about these things you've yeah. paid for a person to click on your website, say, I really don't like this website. I didn't get what I need. And then leave. You've paid for a high bounce rate is all you've paid for at that point. And, and, and I understand that that's a really curt and direct way to say <laughs> But you have to realize that if you're spending money on only ads and expecting the sky to fall around you, it, it, it's just not, it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. And I, I wanted to say one other thing, too. You said, you know, uh, I think you kind of touched on, like, understanding SEO um, as a client. And, and I think I even said something earlier, earlier in, our, in our talk here about how, you know, SEO companies take your money. They're not totally sure how to do SEO and you're not really totally sure how SEO works. So you don't know how to argue with them. So you just keep paying the bill, hoping that yeah. everything will change. <laughs> and you yeah. fire them in 12 months because it didn't work out and you get the next one. Exactly. You have this weird expectation that was never communicated. The SEO company doesn't really, they're kind of a deer in headlights when you finally go, hey, why is everything going in the downward direction? Um, like, you know, another little plug for Array Digital is one of our core values is transparency. <laughs> so if it is going down, you better believe that before you have another meeting with us, we've already looked at it. We already know. And we're trying to figure out what the answer is. So I, sorry, I'll stop the plugs. But, but yes, yeah, <laughs> that is Not up today. core things. Those are those are core things that you should be looking for. If an SEO company is telling you they're doing something, you need to kind of don't be afraid to kind of dig into that a little bit. I understand yeah. that the people that are listening are likely lawyers and I don't know how busy you are and on a day-to-day -day basis, but I can guess and I bet it's nuts. But mm -hmm. but read as much as you can a little bit at a time about SEO because what you'll find is that you'll find companies like Array Digital that are gems that and and a, and a world of companies that'll take your money and and do SEO 
you'll find companies like Array Digital that are like kind of just heads down, nose to the grindstone, trying to yeah, really figure out how clients succeed. No, hundred percent. There's there's good ones out there, and so, but there's there's unfortunately there's a lot more bad ones out there. So, and that's the thing I I yep. talk to people like I sometimes I'll have a client that I meet with, and they're like, yeah, well, we went with someone else, so, and I'll be like, okay, well, why? And let me dig into it, <laughs> and that's you know that's gonna happen. Um, and they'll say, well, they they did the same things you guys did, price was a little bit less. Okay, well, yeah. <laughs> um, if if it says you do SEO, that you know, it's um, it, that doesn't mean anything. It's like it's like we do SEO, yeah. you do SEO. Huh, same price, different price, lower price. It doesn't matter. So it's yeah. it's just you got to really say, okay, well, what are they actually doing? Um, what is their clients? What are they doing? Do they have examples of that? And and honestly, I just you know I know a lot, and I've mentored a lot of people, and I was there myself, and I didn't understand this crap at all, and I still mm -hmm. sold into service, and we always tried our best, but we didn't really know what we were doing and we right. got good results for some and not so good for others. So yeah, but when we got the good results, we didn't really know why. And then when we got the bad results, we didn't really know why. So it's, uh, <laughs> it's how I've it been there myself. And unfortunately, a lot of these agents just, they don't know. And they don't spend the time and they get too busy. Mm -hmm. And we're plugging ourselves more here, but you, know, you can get too busy and then you, you don't have time to get into the researching and why, you know, you're just right. dealing with all your clients. So it's a very slippery slope. Yeah. One of the things that I think I, I learned, and I kind of apply this to a lot of areas in my life, but it applies here too. Um, what's the second question? Your first question when you're shopping, it doesn't have to be a Ray Digital. We're going to find the clients that that fit fit our mold, that that want to work with us, that that want to succeed with us. That's inevitable. We're on a rocket ship. We're doing our own thing. Like join us or don't. It's fine. But what's the second question when you're shopping for someone to do SEO for you? Um, don't just ask, "Do you do SEO?" Because they've prepared to answer that question. They've prepared to say, yes, here's what we do for SEO. The next question is, how effective is it? Like, how many clients do you have that are that are seeing one, you know, hundreds of percentages in growth like we do here at Array? Like yeah. how how many ask that second, third, fourth question? And and the key to, to asking those questions is being at least enough educated on it to understand what the next question should be. You know, it should be how effective is it? Hold hold the person accountable before you're signing a statement of work and saying, yeah, I'm going to give you five, six, ten thousand dollars a month to manage, you know, whatever. It, and, and you don't even know if it's effective. Ask them how many clients they have and how many people are managing those clients. Like, yeah, I think have, question, another question would be <clears throat> when it starts to go bad, what do you do? Yeah. If our traffic goes to tell me? Dive, what's the process for that? Um, <clears throat> and that's probably probably the harder the harder thing to answer that you're going to probably find not a good answer for. But is when things go crappy, what do we do? And that's mm -hmm. that's probably the most important because um, that's when it really means something. Like well, that's when the rubber meets the road. The, the other thing I had talked to, like with some people, like you can be doing all this AI content and just generating and and getting some movement and i've seen sites go real quick and mm -hmm. get some some spike in traffic <clears throat> but if you become relied on that and then google goes Err! you yep. lose it all and then now you staffed up your firm you're relying on all these leads and mm -hmm. then you get hit well then overnight you're gone and so you have to have a company that's gonna be able to pivot make changes quickly adjust looking into it um, and what what's working right today might not be where it works six months or a year from now. So, um, you know, if you do this right, you know, you can make a lot of money. Yeah, can do very well for you. But what do you do in those tough situations and and when things aren't going as well? So, absolutely agree. I, I it's I couldn't have said it better myself. It's just um, it's a constant pendulum of trying to. Prove your value, improve your worth, and at the same time, you know, continuing to be educated so that you can be valuable and worth uh, time for your clients. Like, 
I, I don't know. I, I've never been to a place that cares more about its clients than here. And, and that's why I, I say ask that question about how many clients they have and how many people they have managing them. Because I've been at a place where, where one person's managing 200 clients, 200 oh, SEO crap. clients. That's there, crazy. There, I'm telling you, there's, it's not real. It's not happening. The things that need to happen to your website, the things that need to happen to your Google business profile, the, the math alone doesn't add up in hours. So you have to be asking those questions like, yeah, I understand that right now I'm the bell of the ball and I'm the most important person in your life. But once I sign that dotted line, what happens after that? Do, yeah. I, get, do, I, get, do I get passed off into the ether of, of being some another client on somebody's list of things that maybe he'll get to this week? Maybe he won't. You know, yeah. So I, I'm beating a dead oh, horse yeah. a bit here. But yes, that's that's absolutely well said. Well, all right. Well, we'll um, we'll wrap it up here. And uh, Michael, I appreciate you coming to share. Uh, so, but yeah, anyway, be aware, everyone, if you're listening to this right now, uh, it's probably mid to late March um, when we're, you know, this is going out. But big update happening as we speak. And mm -hmm. Google makes thousands of updates to the algorithms in a year, right, Michael? Yep. So uh, a few usually big core updates along with lots of other things. It's almost like a when a bill gets passed by Congress. <laughs> there might be the major thing, and then there's all this other crap they they sneak in there. Yep, and no one's reading the whole bill. <laughs> like, yeah, nuts. exactly. The bill's 900 pages long, or whatever. Or whatever yeah, you're like, yeah. So yeah, you sneak all this stuff in there. So, um, you know, just be aware. Be looking at your data. Get with your agency or your marketing in house. What are we doing this month? How's it looking? Are we going down? You know, uh, if so, what what are we doing to adjust? Do they you even understand? If you don't understand, yeah. you can reach out to me, message me. Uh, you don't have to hire us, but um, <clears throat> always looking, always looking to help anybody. So if you want me to look at your stuff, um, show you what points you in the right direction. I have plenty of friends and client, uh, you know, law firms that we do not do their marketing. They do it in the house themselves. Uh, they might even have other agencies, uh, but I'm still willing to point them in the right direction or help them. So absolutely. Um, so yeah, reach out. If you got any questions, post them. If you're watching this uh, right now live or on LinkedIn, you know, any questions, put them in the comments and we'll be happy to, to answer them about the core update, Gemini AI, all those things. Um, let us know and we're happy to help. So Michael. Yeah, thanks for appreciate having it, me. Man. Truly, truly an yeah. honor to sit and talk with you for a minute. Yeah, now get back to work. <laughs> yeah, I've got plenty to do. I had to be on a podcast this morning. <laughs> yeah, well, I appreciate it. Um, everyone, have a great day. Michael, you stay on with me. We'll chat backstage and we'll get back to our day here. So, bye, everybody. Thanks so much. See you.